Welcome to 5.6's math moment. Today in fifth grade math, students explore division with decimals. Example number one says a bill was $156.36 for six friends to dine at a restaurant. They are going to share the bill equally, which is a big keyword. When I know equally usually means that I'm going to be sharing it, I'm going to need to divide. How much will each person pay? Well, as I was listening, as I was reading, and as I was thinking, I heard that I'm going to do some division. I'm also going to be using a division of decimal in this case. So I'm going to take my $156.36, and I'm going to divide it by my six friends. All right, when I'm going to go ahead and start dividing, I'm going to think about this answer. First of all, I'm going to think, can six go into one? It can't. Can six go into 15? If you go into six, can go into 15 two times. Six times two is 12. When I subtract, I have 3, bringing down my 6. Can 6 go into 36? It can. It goes in there 6 times. 6 times 6 is 36. Go ahead and bringing down traditionally, or the step-by-step -step algorithm, which I'm using here. Can 6 go into 3? It can't. And a lot of students get stuck here, so they're like, well, what do I do? Do I bring down my next number? You can only bring down one digit at a time. So you put a 0 on top. 0 times 6 is 0. Now when I subtract, I still have 3, and I'm going to bring down that 6. Can 6 go into 36? It can 6 times. 6 times 6 is 36, with that being left over. Now as you're noticing, I didn't put a decimal in there. As I was dividing, I just need to go ahead and pop my decimal up in there, and then I have my answer of $26.06. It's really important in a problem like this to make sure that you go ahead and write the dollar sign to signify that it is money. All right, for example number 2, we have 651 and 6 tenths divided by 18. To solve this problem, I'm going to go ahead and write it down. Divided by my 18. Okay. Again, 18 isn't probably a factor that a lot of students know, so we're going to need to show lots of work on the side with using that guess and check method. Can 18 go into 6? It can't. Can 18 go into 65? I know it can, but I need to figure out how many times. So I'm going to take 18 times 5 to give my starting spot. I have 40, so I have 90. Looking at that, I know it's a little bit too much, so I'm going to pop down maybe to 18 times 3 to see where that puts me. 18 times 3 is 24. I have uh, 1 times 3, which is 3, plus 2 more is 54. All right, that seems like my best option right now. It's going to, if I add another 18 to it, I know I'm going to go above my 65 mark, which would be too much. So I'm going to use 3. 3 times 18 is 54. When I subtract that, I have 5 minus 4, which is 1, 6 minus 5, which is 1, and bring down my next number, which is also a 1. So I have, how many times can 111, or can 18 go into 111? Okay, looking at my guess and check, I have a good starting spot. I know that I've got 90 here when it's 5 times. I need to go, need to go slightly above that. So I'm going to take 18 times 6. When I take 18 times 6, I have 8 times 6, which is 48. Carry my 4. 1 times 6, which is 6, plus 4 more, which is 108. I know that's very close to 111, so I'm going to use that 6. 6 times 18 is 108. When I subtract these, 1 minus 8 I cannot do, so I'm going to borrow. Now it becomes 11 minus 8, which is going to be 3. 0 minus 0 is 0. 1 minus 1 is 0. Bringing down my last number, which is a 6. Can 18 go into 36? Well, looking at this, I should see that I have 18 times 3, which is 54. I'm probably going to go down a little bit further. I know 18 times 1 is just 18, so I'm going to try 18 times 2. With 18 times 2, I get 16, carrying my 1, for 36. So it goes in there 2 times. 2 times 18 is 36 with nothing left over. Now, I need to go ahead and place my decimal. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up my decimal at this point. The one thing I really want to make sure of when I bring up my decimals, I just go straight up. That's why it's so important to make sure your numbers are lined up with the other digits on top of them so that decimal placement's easy to bring up. Another thing, a common mistake that we see in fifth grade is that students try to have 
fractions and decimals combined. Making sure that you know if you're working with a decimal number, you need to only have a decimal answer. So making sure that if that would happen where you'd have a fraction, you know you have improper work somewhere in your problem, or you need to keep bringing down a zero to get rid of that uh, fraction or that decimal until it comes to the ending number or it to be a repeating decimal. If you have any questions, make sure you see your math teacher.